In a small town in Spain, teenage girl Sarah lives with her family, helping with her father's butcher shop. Her mother is rather strict and doesn't let her go outside until she's done all her studying, even in the middle of summer. While this bothers Sarah, she can't deny she isn't always eager to go out because nobody ever invites her to anything and she's constantly bullied by other teenagers for her big-sized body, especially the popular girl clique formed by Maka, Rocio, and Claudia. It's particularly hurtful coming from Claudia because she used to be good friends with Sarah when they were kids. These girls are so mean that one afternoon they stop by the shop to pick up an order made by Claudia's mother, and use the chance to take a picture of Sarah's family to then post it with the hashtag the three little pigs on Instagram. Now Sarah has to stay inside and deal with the pain inflicted by all the mean comments while the popular girls have a great time at the local pool, where the waitress doesn't notice that the stranger is watching everyone carefully. The lifeguard does notice this stranger though and calls him a clown. Later that day, Sarah's mother insists she needs to go out after studying, but her idea is for Sarah to go hunting with her dad. Sarah ignores her and waits for the whole town to take the traditional afternoon nap to go to the pool, that way nobody will be there and she can avoid being made fun of. Unfortunately she isn't alone after all, the stranger is there taking a swim, although at least he doesn't comment on her bikini. The ones that do comment are the trio of popular girls, who are also around and take the chance to make fun of Sarah, calling her a piggy while making pig noises. While the stranger leaves the pool to get his van, Sarah swims underwater to try to escape the mockery, and since her eyes are closed she doesn't see the body of the lifeguard tied to a chair at the bottom of the pool. When she resurfaces to take a breath, the trio puts a pool skimmer net on her head and records it on their phones while still making fun of Sarah. Once their video is done, they run away with all of Sarah's things. Now Sarah has to walk down the road all wet and only in her bikini, which gets her the attention of some boys that stop their car just to bully her some more. Forcing herself to keep moving before things get worse, she crosses the forest area and notices the stranger's van, but she doesn't see a bleeding maca crawling on the floor behind it before the stranger grabs her and pushes her into the van. It isn't until the vehicle takes off that Sarah sees Claudia in the back of the van asking for help, and she freezes in fear when the stranger opens the door. He doesn't attack her though, he just leaves a towel for her before driving away, so Sarah quickly grabs it to finally cover herself up. When she runs back into town, she's seen by Officer Carlitos, who wonders if she's okay but Sarah ignores him. As soon as she makes it home, Sarah takes a shower to try to forget about what happened and is found by her mother, who notices her sunburnt skin and scolds her for going out instead of studying even if she had been the one that told her to go out more. Afterward, Sarah rushes to her room to find some comfort in her favorite sweets, which she keeps hidden in a box because she isn't supposed to have them, and opens her laptop only to be reminded of the Instagram picture with all the bullying comments. This makes her decide she won't tell the police what she saw because the bullies deserve it. Sometime later, Sarah's dad sends her to the grocery store to get some things for him and she tries to get some of her favorite sweets too, but the cashier reminds her what her parents' reaction would be and Sarah decides to leave them. As soon as she's gone, the stranger buys those sweets instead. On her way back, Sarah notices some commotion in town, and when her mother finds her, she drags her with her to the pool, asking weird questions about what she may have seen earlier. Sarah finally understands what's going on when they make it to the pool and find the police there, it turns out the waitress has disappeared and the lifeguard has been found dead, the popular girl trio can't be found either. Knowing Sarah had been there earlier, her mother forces her to talk to the police to tell them what she may have seen, prompting Sarah to lie and say she had gone to the river, not the pool, so she could be alone and not be made fun of. She also calls her mom out for never supporting her and doing nothing in the face of the whole neighborhood treating her badly. When Sarah stomps out of the place, Carlitos wants to follow her and ask more questions because he remembers seeing her earlier and thinks she's lying now, but his father and superior officer Juan makes him stay and help with the crime scene. Later in the evening, Sarah's mom gives her a different meal from the rest of the family, claiming her daughter needs to start a diet if she doesn't want to be called a piggy. Meanwhile the stranger is in a neighbor's house, stealing food and killing the homeowner. After dinner, the mom finds the towel Sarah brought and doesn't recognize it, so Sarah pretends she bought it at the market. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when Claudia's mother comes by to ask if Sarah has heard from Claudia, and Sarah's mom shocks everyone by kicking her out while pointing out Claudia went from best friend to bully for Sarah. Once the woman's gone, Sarah rushes to her room to have a snack but sadly she hasn't got any left, only to find one outside her window when she checks out a weird noise. Nobody can be found outside, thus Sarah eats it anyway before making a plan to recover her phone before her parents realize she's lost it. By distracting her dad with a drink, Sarah steals his phone and takes it with her to the forest in order to use it to make her own ring. She isn't the only one there though, Carlitos and Juan are around looking for a lost bull. Carlitos still thinks they should interrogate Sarah, but Juan reminds him to concentrate on the task at hand. Sarah doesn't notice them and proceeds with her plan, which works well, following her ringtone allows her to find her things. The sound also gets the stranger's attention, making Sarah freeze again when she sees him, but the man doesn't hurt her. In fact when the missing girl's family show up in the forest tracking the phones with a special app, the stranger takes her into an abandoned building to protect her and touches her face gently to keep her quiet. 
Once Sarah understands, the stranger escapes through the forest, and Sarah uses strategic spots in the building to hide from the families until they move deeper into the forest when one of them finds a body. Carlitos and Juan hear the screaming and come over to check what's going on, only to discover the body belongs to the missing waitress. The finding of the body creates the perfect distraction for Sarah to escape and get home, where she throws her clothes in the washer to get rid of any possible clues. Unfortunately Sarah's mom hears the washer noises and comes to find her daughter trying to sneak around, so Sarah lies again and pretends she's been trying to steal cookies, which is very believable in her mother's opinion. Afterward, Sarah runs to her room and after choosing a naughty video from the internet on her phone, she listens to it while thinking very thoroughly about the moment of closeness she had with the stranger. Her enjoyment is suddenly interrupted by someone throwing a little stone at her window, it's Pedro, a friend of the missing girls. Sarah agrees to meet him outside and learns he saw the video of her in the pool because the girl sent it to the group chat, so he wants to know why Sarah lied to the police. Nervous, Sarah pretends she lied because she didn't want her mother and the cops to know about the prank video, but Pedro still doesn't believe her and tries to make her relax by sharing his special cigarette, he also swears he deleted the video because he doesn't agree with the way they treat her. This is Sarah's first time smoking and it makes her all giggly, prompting Pedro to push for the truth, explaining the girls' families are suspecting him since he was the last person that had been with the trio before it all happened. Sarah still refuses to talk but promises to tell the truth if Pedro gets arrested. Meanwhile at home, Sarah's mother finds Claudia's initials and some bloodstains on the towel. At that moment, Claudia's mother finds Sarah and Pedro hanging out together and wonders if they're planning something. Pedro panics and confesses he has a video proving Sarah was at the pool, causing Claudia's mother to attack Sarah as she demands to know where her daughter is. Sarah's mother hears the commotion and comes out to defend her daughter, which ends up with both moms getting into a fight. The whole neighborhood soon comes out too to look at what's going on including the cops, while the stranger watches from afar. Moments later in the police station, Sarah confesses she did lie but only mentions the prank, she still doesn't say anything about the stranger or the girls in the van. The cops still don't believe her and Carlitos pushes until he makes Sarah cry, making her mom stop the interrogation and leave with Sarah while saying there won't be any more questions without a lawyer. On their way out of the station, Pedro's father apologizes for his son's behavior. Meanwhile the stranger sneaks inside Sarah's room and is found by her father, so the stranger has no choice but to fight him until he knocks him out. When they arrive home, Sarah and her mom begin arguing. The mother wants to know the story behind the towel while Sarah cries and insists nobody understands her, she also wishes her own family was dead. This is heard by the stranger, who interrupts the argument by hitting the mom and intending to go after Sarah's brother next. Sarah stops him before he can kill anyone and agrees to leave with him under her mother's worrying gaze. On the street, Sarah and the stranger come across the boys that bullied Sarah the other day, so the stranger scares them off by almost running over them with his van. Afterward, he drives towards the forest, and on the road, he gives Sarah her favorite sweet. Sarah isn't sure if she should accept it, she's also a bit weirded out by all the religious merch inside the van. The stranger tries to stop her from looking at those, and in his distraction, he doesn't notice the lost bull crossing the road, making them crash. Since Sarah passes out, the stranger carries her to his hideout and even takes care of her wounds. When Sarah wakes up a few hours later, she finds herself inside an abattoir and to her surprise, Claudia and Rocio are there too, still alive but tied up. As Claudia calls Sarah out for not telling the police about this, Sarah tries to untie the girls, but she only manages to remove the gag before she must run and hide when the stranger comes back. The fact the gags are missing doesn't go unnoticed and the stranger hurts Claudia until she confesses Sarah did it and she's now hiding. The stranger immediately goes after her, so Sarah runs through various corridors until she accidentally trips and comes across Maka's body. Sarah screams at the sight, allowing the stranger to find her and bring her back to the main room making sure to be gentle to Sarah again as he calms her down and explains he won't hurt her. Then, he grabs his knife and puts it in Sarah's hand, telling her they can kill her bullies together. Sarah actually hesitates for a moment as she considers the offer, but in the end she chooses to do the right thing and attacks the stranger instead. It's not hard for him to hit Sarah and push her away, but since he's distracted, Claudia takes the chance to kick him as well. Sarah sees this opportunity and stabs the stranger, who immediately fights back, and during the struggle, a weapon he left nearby is shot by accident, causing Claudia to lose a hand. Ignoring the screaming, Sarah continues to attack the stranger until she kills him, but as soon as she realizes what she's done, she begins crying in denial, she can't believe she took a life and that it was the life of the only person that ever was nice to her. Once she calms down, Sarah grabs the stranger's weapon and shoots at the girls, but it isn't until she's left that it's revealed she didn't kill them, she only released them by shooting their ropes. In the middle of the road, Sarah comes across Pedro on his bike, who offers to take her back to town without questioning the blood on her clothes. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.